All right, let's uh, kick this off. I know everyone's busy, so I want to be sensitive to everyone's time. And we have a uh, very special call today. Usually we'll have uh, team leads on from the Gnosis ecosystem and they'll run through updates. But today we have a really special call with Succinct Labs and uh, the Gnosis Chain Bridges team is also here. Um, so today is June 29th. This is the Gnosis DAO community call. My name is John. I'm a contributor at the Gnosis DAO and Gnosis Chain. Um, so before we get before we get started, I want to make one uh, quick important announcement. Uh, Gnosis Core Devs have set a date for the Gnosis Chain Chapella upgrade. That's for August first, twenty twenty three, at eleven thirty four UTC. It's a very highly anticipated and uh, you know big announcement for us. So it marks a significant step forward in the evolution of Gnosis Chain. Most notably, Chapella enables withdrawals for stake GNO. So if you're a node runner, uh, definitely please stop over in the validator channel in the Gnosis Chain Discord for all uh, you know up-to-date info, especially client info. Uh, it's critical that your node is updated prior to the 1st of August. So please join us in Discord. And uh, we'll also share uh, resources with you here on this call. So if you're looking at Twitter, you can uh, check that out. All right. So without further ado, let's jump into the main topic of our call today. I want to say just a quick hello to uh, to our guests. Um, we, we're joined by Uma Roy of Succinct Labs and Georgios Gantikas. And Georgios, I'm, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your last name. Please correct me if, if I did. Uh, Georgios is from the Gnosis Chain Bridges team. So hi, Uma. Hi, Georgios. Thank you for, for making the time. Yeah, for sure. Hey, John, thanks. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'd like to just introduce uh, Succinct Labs and you know make the announcement, and then we'll jump into a, a short conversation. So, today we're extremely excited to announce that after close collaboration with the Gnosis Core uh, development team, Succinct's Ethereum zk Light client will be officially integrated to secure the Gnosis Omni Bridge on mainnet. With this addition, Succinct's ZK proof of consensus for Ethereum is responsible for securing the Gnosis Omni Bridge with over 40 million TVL and 1.5 billion in stablecoin asset flow to date. So for some background, uh, Succinct is building a secure, decentralized, permissionless interoperability layer for Ethereum and Gnosis Chain powered by zero-knowledge Succinct proofs called ZK Snarks. So we'll get into what a ZK Light client is, but first I just want to yeah, talk a little bit about uh, Succinct so everyone's kind of on the same page. Succinct is working towards a, a world where all blockchains can communicate with each other in a trust-minimized way without any centralized entities or multi-sigs in between. So much like ZK rollup teams are using ZK Snarks to scale execution, uh, using Succinct's proofs for scaling verification of consensus, otherwise known as proof of consensus, uh, can lead to much more secure and decentralized interoperability compared to existing bridging solutions. Uh, there's been a ton of hacks in the, in the last year, and I'm sure everyone's well aware of that. Bridge hacks, especially, um, with billions of dollars at stake. Um, so uh, it's this is one of the most important problems to solve in the entire crypto ecosystem. Um, and Succinct strongly believes that their approach with proofs of consensus is the end game of interoperability. Um, so yeah, with that, let's let's jump into what zk light clients are. Um, you know, kind of how they work. So uh, Uma, if you don't mind introducing yourself and you know what you do with Succinct, uh, I think that'd be a, a good way to kick off the conversation. Yeah, definitely. So I'm Uma. I'm one of the co-founders of Succinct. Um, and in general, I think you stated kind of like our goal pretty well. We're basically trying to make interoperability more secure, more trustless. I think currently the interoperability landscape today is dominated by these like centralized solutions, which require placing all trust in multi-sigs. And then more importantly, these multi-sigs uh, don't have great security properties. And so um, the interoperability uh solution that most people use today is like not really secure and like we've seen that in the form of like bridge hacks and like kind of the negative consequences um and then at succinct we think that 
the best way to do interoperability, at least between different L1s, such as Gnosis and Ethereum, is to basically verify the consensus of each L1 uh, in the execution layer of the other chain. So the idea here, it's like very similar to IBC uh, in the Cosmos ecosystem and in general, like client bridging, where you run a like client for one chain as a smart contract in the other chain. And then with the like client, once you have the like client in Ethereum state, then you can get like the state of the other chain and then you can like do bridging according to the state of whatever actions have happened on the other chain. And in terms of running a like client, generally running a like client in a smart contract is pretty expensive because you have to verify all these signatures and there's, you know, a lot of other problems associated with it um, because you have to verify signatures and you have to verify all this information and that's generally expensive. And so we can kind of take inspiration from the ZK teams who are using ZK for scaling execution and then we can take that as inspiration and basically have ZK for verifying consensus and make that more efficient. And so that's what we do. We basically have the ZK snark that verifies Ethereum consensus and Gnosis chain consensus. And we use that to run a succinct gas efficient like client on either chain. Um, and yeah, we call that proof of consensus, which I think uh, John referenced. Um, and yeah, so that's like, a bit about us and like a high level approach of what we're doing. Super cool. Um, yeah, I mean, here we are in 2023 and we have all these L2s and, and uh, you know, it's like, um, you know, roll-ups are the hot topic of, of how to, how to scale Ethereum. Um, you know, why, why is it that the, this particular design pattern of the uh, proof of consensus or, you know, having a ZK light client as a validator, um, running a trust minimized bridge between two L1s. Why, why is it that that design pattern wasn't possible until now? Um, you know, what, what were the, what were like the blockers, uh, you know, holding this kind of innovation back and, and how did succinct, you know, d develop this technology? Yeah. So I think in general, like implementing, um, these like ZK circuits is still pretty difficult. Um, I think ZK as a field is moving super, super quickly. And like in the last few years has made a ton of progress in making these like circuits accessible. Um, so in like a ZK snark, you basically have to write like the statement you're trying to generate a proof of uh, in this like kind of usually specialized language and expression. And then it gets compiled into like polynomials and then, it ends up being a statement about like polynomials and polynomial qualities. Um, but yeah, generally like, you know, the tooling there because it's such a new field is, is uh, pretty, you know, hard to deal with and it's like hard to make these circuits. So I think over the past few years, like advances in ZK have made it like possible to make these kinds of circuits, if that makes sense. Um, and like have it be performant enough and feasible enough to be able to prove these statements and use it for, for blockchain scaling. Uh, so yeah, that's why it's like more recently possible. And you'll even see that with like the ZK EVMs, like two of the most used rollups today are Optimism and Arbitrum, but ZK Sync recently launched their main net. And there's also been like Polygon ZK EVM that recently launched and Squirrel's working on a new ZK EVM. So I think there's like a ton of um, new ZK products that are finally coming out to like mainnet uh, that are only recently possible because of the advances in the technology. Yeah, it definitely feels like we've reached an inflection point. And, uh, you know, every conference, every Ethereum conference that you go to, you know, there's, there's a lot of talk about, um, you know, ZK proofs and uh, just the technology in general. Um, can you talk a little bit about your, uh, Sysync's relationship with Gnosis and, you know, how that kind of, uh, developed over time and, and, um, you know, why Sysync has integrated, uh, or, you know, uh, uh, built on top of the Omni bridge. Yeah, definitely. So Gnosis, um, was kind of gave us our start. Uh, there was a grant GIP 57, where they gave us this really generous grant to basically work on the R&D of this technology. I think when we started, it wasn't really clear if it was possible to make these ZK circuits to make the light client. There was questions around like, whether it'd be computationally too much work or too expensive. 
um, it, you know, whether proving time would be performance. And we kind of, with that grant money, we funded the R and D of the work. And so, um, yeah, Gnosis really gave us our start. And one thing that's really nice about Gnosis is it has the same architecture as Ethereum. So it's the same consensus, uh, the beacon chain, and it's like the same code as Ethereum. And so that's really great for us because we implemented this like ZK like client for Ethereum, and then we can use that to bi-directionally communicate between Ethereum and Gnosis. Um, so that's super awesome. And yeah, basically we'd done all this work building out kind of like a proof of concept of the ZK circuit. And then we ended up getting it audited, taking it to production, launching it on mainnet. And it just made a lot of sense. Like once we had that live to like actually use that technology to actually secure the Gnosis bridge. Um, because obviously the Gnosis bridge holds, you know, a, a significant amount of money and, you know, hopefully over time that money becomes even more significant as the ecosystem grows. And so it's like pretty important that the bridge be secure. And so it made sense to like add us, use our ZK like client to help secure the bridge and make it more secure and safe. Um, and kind of have this additional layer on top of the existing bridge security. And, and how many audits did the uh, ZK Light Client go through before it went, uh, before you integrated on, on uh, the Omni Bridge? We got three total audits of the ZK Light Client. So it's been looked at many times. Uh, I want to loop in Giorgios here um, j just to talk about, uh, you know, what this means for users and, uh, um, you know, how it, how the ZK Light Client, um, you know, improves security for the Omni Bridge overall, uh, you know, why the AMB and not the XI Bridge. So Giorgios, um, yeah, how does this affect users uh, first and foremost? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, why... Uh... Why the Omni Bridge? Uh, I think uh, I think in principle we could uh, apply or we can apply the same of the X type bridge. Uh, is that we uh, we just pick the the Omni Bridge first because uh, Omni Bridge is based on the Gnosis A and B, which is the generalized message passing bridge, um, and which yeah basically signs uh, generic messages from one editor to the other, and I will be easier let's say in the beginning to analyze um, how we would, uh, we would structure, how we would develop um, uh, a like client based validator. Um, and yeah, so how it affects the users. So, uh, so far, uh, yeah, as, as most know, um, the, the bridge is based uh, uh, on the security of seven uh, off-chain validators, which are uh, quite decentralized. They're they run by uh, seven different entities, uh, but still they're so-called um, uh, off-chain. Uh, so they just observe uh, and, and we have to kind of trust them, uh, what they observe to, to post on the other side of the network. Um, as said, yeah, they're uh, quite decentralized, so uh, the bridge is quite secure, by the way. So it's run like this setup for multiple years on it, uh, without any security issues. Um, and now with the with the light client uh, validator, um, I think um, yeah. Most importantly, I mean the benefit here is uh, users will feel a lot more secure. So uh, the transactions, each transaction that goes through OmniBridge is not. Um, validated only by the seven um, external entities, but also by the Ethereum consensus uh, itself. Um, and yeah, of course, there is there is a price to pay always for security. Uh, luckily, in our case now, it's not uh, it's not money, so the fees are not increasing, uh, but the time uh, for bridging increases. Uh, and what we mean by that is. Um, at the moment, I think average time for bridging from Ethereum to Gnosis is, uh, yeah, let's say around five to 10 minutes. Um, or if we talk with blocks is around 20 blocks or 20, 25 blocks. Um, and now we have to increase this amount um, of blocks to around 100 uh, or even a bit more. So we'll go from five to 10 minutes to around 20, 25 minutes. Um, why we do that? Because uh, Light Client 
is uh, slower uh, for reasons that, uh, yeah, Uma mentioned before, there needs to be a proof of consensus, uh, several kind of proofs generated and uh, signature validations on chain. So it takes more time. Uh, so security, yeah, takes more time. Um, I think uh, from a user experience perspective, this delay um, is acceptable uh, because of the additional security. However, for the users that cannot uh, still think that this 25 minutes uh, is too long, um, yeah, we just need to stress out here that all the liquidity-based third-party bridges, uh, which are based on top of the AMB. So, for example, um, Hop Protocol, Connext, um, Jumper Exchange, or Lefi, uh, they they're not affected from from this change. So, uh, you can still bridge fast to any network from Gnosis or to Gnosis using these third-party bridges, which are still uh, based on uh, on the AMB, of course, right? So the security is, is, is also increased for these guys as well. Okay, great. Um, and uh, Georgios, do you, do you want to let us know when the integration is going to go live? Yeah, so we plan to do this on Monday. Um, so we'll add the, the validator uh, on Monday and... Um, we will increase. Uh, I mean, this this uh, what I mentioned before about the blocks. Uh, we'll most probably need to fine tune it, so we'll we'll observe how the network um, performs, and we might need to increase it or decrease it. Uh, so we need to find like the optimal spot where um, validator has the time to 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 validate all the transactions, but mm, the users do not have to wait for an extra time more than that. So on Monday and on, um, yeah, um, at 11 a.m. UTC, we'll, we'll do this change. And uh, most probably a we'll, couple of small fine-tuning changes will come in the upcoming weeks. Awesome. Super exciting. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things at play here. Um, so it, it, it's... Uh, you have to talk about this stuff from like a very high level on Twitter spaces because uh, we don't have any like visual resources to, to really dig down into the technical details of really how the bridge works. And, you know, like the larger implications at play are, you know, Uma mentioned that um, the interoperability that succinct ZK light client offers is similar to um, the IBC model of where, um, you know, blockchains can connect to each other in a bi-directional kind of horizontal way. Um, so, different L1s can connect to Ethereum um, in a way that wasn't possible before. Um, so it's a different way of scaling Ethereum. And Gnosis sees itself as like, a, you know, a central part of that, um, of that picture. So uh, on Monday, we, we will publish a blog post about um, the OmniBridge and the ZK Light Client, but we'll also publish um, content about the, the larger vision at play and the, the, the roadmap for um, the Gnosis chain bridges um, and why Gnosis is important for Ethereum and the relationship there. So definitely stay tuned. There's a lot to talk about. Um, Uma, thank you so much for making the time. Uh, is, there, is there anything else you'd like to share with us, like any upcoming events or you know where we can find more info about Succinct? Yeah, I think the bridge will as George has mentioned, uh, we'll go live on Monday, hopefully, and we, we have a proposal out today. So, um, yeah, I think in terms of more information, like we'll post, when that goes live, we'll post the blog post on our Twitter. Um, and Twitter is always like a great way to keep up to date with what we're doing. Um, and then, yeah, we'll be in ETCC, like speaking at a few events. Um, so, yeah. Cool. And uh, Georgios, thank you for making the time. Uh, you know, is there anything else that you'd like to share with us before we let you go? Um, super excited also for for next week's call, uh, where we will present more um, how this project, um, this improvement that we just discussed, uh, fits into the bigger picture of um, um, Gnosis bridges roadmap in general and you know we also have some 
uh, really exciting uh, stuff to share on um, yeah, what's the next step. Um, because that's definitely one very important step, but not the last one. So yeah, looking forward. Yeah, so that call is on uh, July 5th at 3 p.m. UTC. So that's a Wednesday. That's on the Gnosis Chain Discord. And we'll be joined by Georgios, uh, who will uh, run through a demo. Um, so there'll be a lot of visuals, and we can dig deeper into um, you know, the, the light client integration and, like Georgios mentioned, the, the larger uh, roadmap for um, the Gnosis Chain bridges. So... Yes, uh, Gnosis will be at ECC as well, and uh, we, we have another big announcement there, so um, stay tuned, and if you're going to be there, please uh, look out for us. Uh, Gnosis Chain will have a booth, so stop by, say hello. The next Gnosis DAO community call will be on July 13th, and uh, we'll have a bunch of updates then as well. So thank you, everyone, for making the time, as always. Um, Really appreciate it. And Uma, Georgios, also thanks for making the time. Really appreciate it. And we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys.